we need to be genuine in our faith. We need to be honest in our faith and not just talk about it amongst this group, but to go out in those doors and to be about it. And so with that said, the theme of this is called, don't just talk about it, be about it. And God's promises for us, God's promises concerning us are permanent. And we all have something we can be doing right now to serve God and edifying his church and encouraging one another. This time to do that is now. The moment is now because tomorrow is not promised. And so I want to encourage all of us as a collective to be doers of the word and not just hearers. And the scripture for that is James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. And it says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom, into the word of God that gives freedom, and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. And we want to be blessed in what we do. And so I want to share my testimony. For those that don't know me, I'm Charity Bell. And I moved here about three years ago from South Florida. Um, I grew up always wanting to be a news anchor. I always wanted to be a news reporter. Didn't think I could do it. So I, in high school, we had something called dual enrollment where you can do college classes and get your like high school diploma at the same time. So I went to be an otolaryngologist, which is a fancy word for ears, and no, ears nose, and throat doctor. And one day I was watching a TED Talk and I was like, man, God, I'm going to make a lot of money being a doctor, but that's not what I want to do. And I was like, I, I, I want to like take the step of faith and be a journalist. I want to tell people stories. I want to go out into the community and get to know people and share their stories and give glory to you at the same time. So in high school, I made that transition, graduated high school with my associate's degree, went on to college, graduated from college with my bachelor's degree at the age of 20, picked up from South Florida, moved here not knowing a single person no family no friends and so that was february of 2020 pandemic hits march 2020 and i'm thinking god what did i do because this is not what i planned this is not what i envisioned this is not what i had in mind and so back in march of this year i ended up leaving that job because it started to negatively affect my health. I was losing my hair, um, I, my weight was going up and down, I was having heart palpitations, cycles out of the norm, like a health concern you could think of that would want to make you go to the doctor, I was having it. On the outside it looked like everything was fine, I was coming to church serving, but on the inside my body was wreaking havoc and I had to trust God that this is not what I planned, but I'm going to give it to you anyways. So I left that job not knowing what to expect, not knowing if I was going to stay here in Quincy or if I was going to move back home. But then I remembered what Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6 says, to not lean on my own understanding, but to trust in God and he will direct my path. So if we fast forward to June, July of this year, I ended up going to the doctor and they found nothing. At first they had told me I was gonna be having to take a pill for the rest of my life, every single day for the rest of my life. I went to the doctor, they found nothing. I'm not taking a pill, I'm, my hair not falling out as far as I know. All the other symptoms I was having was gone. But I didn't trust and I didn't lean into anyone else except God. I truly believe that God healed me. And so what I'm saying is to say, when we come in this room every single week, we need to really be about it. Not just come here, have fun with our friends, and then leave faithless, leave living in doubt and in fear, but really putting our trust in God. And I want to encourage you, if you've fallen short of the glory of God, because we all do, we all make mistakes every single day, I want to encourage you to repent. And simply what that means is when you do fall short, confess it. Confess it to God, confess it to someone that you trust and to turn away from it. Don't just say, God, I'm sorry, because that simply is a asking for forgiveness. That's an apology. And sometimes we ask for apologies for our friends and our family, and then we go and do the same thing. That's not repentance. 
but ask God to forgive you for falling short and to truly turn your life around. And the scripture that I have for that is Romans 13, 11, 14. And what that says is this is all the more urgent for you know how late it is. Time is running out, wake up for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living because we belong to the day. We must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of God. And do not let yourself even think about ways to indulge in your evil desires. And I just want to encourage you. Each and every one of you have a purpose. Each and every one of you has a calling and an identity in God. Even if you don't feel like it or it doesn't look like it or it doesn't seem like it. Each and every one of you has a purpose. You have a gift. If you like speaking... I know that there are some people in here that have a TikTok that use it to share the gospel. I mean, that's using your gift to glorify God. I know that there's others in here that have come and hung out at your house and you just made me feel so welcomed. That's the gift of hospitality. There are some people like my homie back here on the, on the keys playing music. I know that there are other people in here that write poetry and write songs. I mean, like that is using your gift. Use it to glorify God. There's some athletes in here. Use it to glorify God because you all have something. First Peter 4, verses 8 through 11. And it says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has a gift, use it to serve one another. As good stewards of God's very grace, whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to him belonging glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And the last thing I want to leave you with, the last charge I want to give to you, is that when you go out here living how Christ says to live, live above reproach. One thing my mom used to always say is don't ever give anything, anyone anything bad to say about you. And it's simply all that means is live right. If you're not gossiping, nobody can't call you a gossiper. If you're not lying, nobody can't call you a liar. If you're not a thief, nobody can't call you a thief. Live how God says live right now. I mean, it's so easy to open your phone and see the evil that's happening in the world. I mean, it's clear. It's so easy to leave outside of these doors and see how wicked the world is around us. But you don't have to be a part of that. You can be above that. And scripture actually says in Titus 1, 7 through 9, For an overseer, as God's steward, which is us, must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or a drunkard or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. And I know that's hard. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught so that he may be able to give instruction and sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. If you're living right, you can call out your friends who aren't. Not because you're better than them, not because you're bigger than them, but because you've gone through it and you've overcome it. So you can also encourage them in their walk. And now y'all have been hearing me talk about God and Jesus this whole time and how we should be living according to the way he says live. But if you haven't ever met this God, the God that healed me, the God that loves me, that loves you, you can meet him tonight, right here, right now. And it's your choice. And it's a choice that I've been so blessed to have made. There's this God that died for us. This God who lived a perfect life. His name is Jesus. He, son of God, came down in the form of Jesus, lived a perfect and holy life, facing the same temptations that we go through, and yet he didn't fall into them. He lived a blameless life to give you hope. He lived a blameless life life to heal you. It says that by his stripes we're healed. He was beaten on a cross 
for each and every one of us. He loved us so much knowing that there would be a chance that we would never even step into that love. He did it all to have a relationship with us. Religion is one thing, but God desires a relationship. He desires to be in community with us, an intimate and personal relationship. And when he died on the cross, he didn't stay dead, but he rose again three days later to give you hope, to give you life freely and abundantly. It's so hard to fathom when I think about how messed up I've been and the bad decisions and decisions that I've made and to know that a God loved me so much, me, Charity Bell, loved me so much to die and live for me. God, I just thank you so much for your love, for your peace that transcends all understanding that sometimes it's so hard to fathom why you would heal someone like me, that why you would love someone like us. Yet you did, yet you do. God, I trust and believe that each person in here has a calling uniquely designed for their life. Your scripture says that you knew each and every one of us so intimately in the pit of our mother's womb, you knew us. You know us better than we know ourselves. And so God, the God-sized dreams that you've placed in our hearts, I pray that you give them the encouragement, the boldness to go out and pursue every single thing that is birthed on the inside of them. Let it blossom to bring you glory. God, I pray for protection over every single person as we travel. And I just pray that each person experiences your love here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.